Hey guys, this is Matt Rock one video producer at HUSNG.com, and today I'm going to do a quick rundown of Isomizer and its features and what are useful to Heads Up Syngos. Uh, first thing here is I'm going to set up for Chip EV. I'm going to set the blinds to 5100 with two players, and I'm going to set the starting stacks to 1500. However, the blinds are 5100, so we're only 15 big blinds effective. In this case, I'm going to have the hero set to go all in, and we're going to figure out what is plus EV in this spot. In order to do that, we set the big blinds calling range right here, and we assign him a calling range. Once we've decided to do that, we back out, and we can calculate. Uh, this graph right here, the green ones, show all the plus CV spots in order for us to open shove. This does not take into account our min raise ranges. This is just assuming we're opening everything, similar to a modified Nash range. We can also do a similar scenario where we move the hero to the big blind and he's in the big blind for 100 and we are set we set the small blind to go all in and we assign the small blind a shoving range while doing this we can also eliminate a lot of hands we don't expect him to open shove 15 big blinds with like his big pairs as well as his big aces now once we calculate we can figure out the proper calling range for this. Rather than having the small blind move all in, we can also set him to min raise and we can calculate the proper reshove range. We set the min raise range, throw in a few random raise fold hands here. You can do that by clicking and holding the mouse button and dragging it across the hands or individually selecting them. Then we set the small blinds calling range to our reshove. Do the same thing here. Sorry, it was already set. And we can calculate. And this gives us another graph. Currently, this graph is set to show uh, chip EV. So it says by reshoving each one of these hands, such as jack six, will net 9.25 chips versus folding. When we fold, we lose 100 chips, the size of the big blind, and when we reshove, we lose less chips, uh, 9.3 chips less. Uh, if you'd like, you can change the range to minimum EV difference in chips. Say you are playing a villain that you think you have a much larger edge on and you don't need to take high variance lines, you can change this for a minimum chip difference and it'll give you a much tighter calling range. We can also change this data rather than just showing chip EV, showing IC, ICM EV percent. Uh, one I find very useful is if we change this to ICM dollar EV and if you're playing say $100 heads up sit and goes and the prize pool is $200 we can calculate again and it will show us the actual dollar amount that you make with each hand and the same thing with the chip EV difference dollar EV, I'm sorry, dollar EV difference Another thing we can do is analyze four bet spots. Heroes in the small blind, we set him to min raise. Big blind, we set to three bet, say 400. Grand stack sizes aren't ideal for this, but uh, say now we assign him his three bet range. Let's give him. Let's let's just give him like a nutted range with maybe random bluff. That's. Now we give him a calling range if we were to four bet shove. I'll just give it all, pretty much all of it. And we calculate it, and again we get a result if we were to four bet shove over the villain's min raise. Next, I want to take a look at some other charts that we can utilize. In this instance, I've put the hero back in the small blind with 15 bigs. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to click the Calculate Nash Equilibrium number to give us our ranges. And what this does is it will give our hero the pushing range and our villain the calling range of the Nash Equilibrium. I calculate this, we get our results, and we're going to jump over one to the range chart. What this does is it will show us how our range 
plays against his range, and we can move it along the line here to see different ranges. On the left side, we have our hero range, and we can see that if the villain is calling less than about 19% of the time, 15 bigs, if he's calling with less than 19% of his hands, we can profitably shove almost any two cards. However, as his calling range widens, it becomes less profitable. Next, I'm going to jump over to the hand EV chart. And what this does is it shows how this particular hand, shown over here to the left, fares against the big blind's calling range. As you can see, the tighter he calls, the more money we make. This is in chip EV currently. We can change that up here to the left again. And as his calling range gets wider, we make less money. But then again, as it gets even wider, we actually lose less money. So he has an optimal calling range here. We can also choose these hand ranges based on different rankings. We've got the Sklansky range, random hands, power push, power call. Now I'm going to look at one of the newer features, and that is Isomizer's ability to calculate a shove range versus a small blind limp. To do that, I've placed the hero and the big blind again, we 15 bigs effective. I'm going to set the small blind to call. Now what we do is we go over here, we set our small blind calling range to a bunch of trap hands as well as just some ran let's set some random junk that he's just going to limp stab. Uh, one of the cool things that you can also do with these ranges is you can save custom ranges. Like for this example, if this were a range that I thought I'd use frequently versus a villain that was limping his button, I could click Save Range, give it a name, and it will place it up here to quickly access in the future. In order to access that, say we change our range, we click it, and it will automatically load that. That is very useful for uh, saving custom ranges and creating your own charts. Uh, back to this spot, we're going to give him this range. Back out. Now we're going to give him a calling range. I'm going to use this slider here at the bottom to give him just a calling range of his limp trap hands. Now what we do is we're going to calculate our push and it gives us these numbers. Now what's unique about this feature when we're talking about stealing over a limp is the EV check. Down here at the bottom you have to estimate what you are going to make if you were to check rather than to shove. Some people may play very poorly post-flop and they may actually lose more than one big blind over the long run by checking. Um, usually these stats can be found in Poker Tracker or Hold Manager or another one of your software programs that you use. Um, otherwise you'll just have to guess it. Um, some people play really well post-flop and they can give themselves a loss, a net loss of 0.6 big blinds. And what this does is again in a situation where you're say calculating a resteal, the small blind when he min raises you fold and you lose one big blind always. In this case since you, there's no option to fold pre-flop you have to guesstimate your value when seeing a flop. So in this case, if we were to lose 0.6 bigs in the long run by checking in this spot, this is the range that we should be shoving over his limp. We can also click individual hands in here, and this works in all the other gra uh, results graphs as well. We click on a specific hand, we go to detailed report, and it breaks it down into many different ways. We can also calculate the bust probability. So like if you were restealing on somebody or in this situation when somebody limps and we shove, it'll calculate the percentage of times that you will bust in this spot. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my quick overview of Isomizer. Uh, I've only had the software for a few weeks, but I've already noticed an, a drastic improvement and the quickness and ability to analyze hands over using Poker Stove. Um, I'm able to do things instantly that I used to spend 10 minutes doing before, and uh, it's been an incredibly useful piece of software for me.